welcome to a new topic. Today we are going to discuss uh, uh, normalized difference vegetation index and other indices. Earlier very briefly we have touched uh, NDVI when we have been discussing or started discussing on multispectral analysis and uh, along with the band ratio and decorrelation stretch, principal component stretch. At that time very briefly I have mentioned about NDVI. Uh, today we will have a complete uh, exhaustive discussion on NDVI and uh, its applications basically applications are in veg vegetation related studies. Uh, these uh, three next uh, this slide and next two slides are repeat of our earlier discussion just to connect uh, with uh, previous discussion I am using these slides. And uh, that is normalized uh, difference vegetation index. As you know that uh, you know the uh, near infrared band minus red band divided by a near infrared band or NIR band plus red band. And uh, this will create two things. One is uh, it reduces the number of bands one and also uh, it uh, gives uh, uh, the index for the vegetation because we are using uh, near infrared and then uh, that red band here and then near infrared plus red band again here. So, using this kind of uh, indexing uh, we can know not only about the condition of vegetation, but if vegetation is suffering from some kind of stresses uh, because we are using red band and uh, if vegetation is suffering from some kind of stresses there will be a shift from infrared towards the red and uh, that means from longer wavelength to uh, shorter wavelength and that will give us a uh, indication or index about the condition of the vegetation especially the changes in the chlorophyll content. So, that is why these uh, vegetation indexes becomes very important. The example also we discussed very briefly I will uh, touch here again that uh, if in uh, see if in near infrared if it is giving 50 percent uh, component and then in visible part we are having just 8 percent component in case of a healthy vegetation. But and uh, if we see that index what would happen the NDVI would be 0.72. Whereas, in case of uh, uh, vegetation which is under stress or drying up uh, because of lack of water or maturity or any other reason, then this uh, visible component has increased very significantly and at the same time this near infrared because chlorophyll content has reduced and therefore, the uh, this uh, near infrared uh, reflection in near infrared by the vegetation will reduce and uh, therefore, our NDVI or the index becomes only 0.14. And that way we can assess the conditions of vegetation and basically these, uh, these changes are because of changes in the chlorophyll content. Example if we see here that a NDVI in the month of June uh, of uh, 2003 of UK, uh, United Kingdom, Ireland and some parts of Europe. And though the summer time is there and they, we are seeing uh, this NDVI values are quite high as you can see uh, around uh, 8, 9 or 1. And uh, whereas, in the month of October that means the winter is approaching, the, uh, the vegetation is getting dry and a result of this the NDVI values are really getting very low. Uh, some uh, in some parts they are near 0 or 0.1 or little bit uh, up to 0.5 or 0.6. So, that way the conditions of vegetations can be assessed very quickly implying these two channels that is near infrared channel which gives the best reflection if vegetation is healthy and the red channel because if there is a change in the chlorophyll content the reflection will shift from near infrared towards the red means from longer wavelength to shorter wavelength. And this uh, you know shift in the red edge uh, can give us lot of clues about the vegetation condition. So, uh, when we say index what, what basically mean is a sign or measure of something and here what we are measuring is the chlorophyll content in the vegetation. And these indices uh, and band ratios, band ratios we have discussed extensively. 
So, these indices and band ratios are the common form uh, for spectral enhancement because uh, there might be many bands and we want to enhance in uh, the way by which we can uh, you know uh, assess the condition of vegetation that is the contribution of vegetation properties and uh, also uh, two or more bands uh, can be used are used basically in NDVI or in vegetation index and uh, then uh, it allows us to reliable spatial and temporal intercomparisons of terrestrial photosynthetic activities and canopy structure variations. So, in that way uh, especially when people are working on global climate change and other things and especially focusing on vegetation related changes NDVI has become vegetation index has become a very powerful tool to assess the changes which might be occurring due to change in climates or global warming. So, there are many uh, variations variants of these vegetation indices and uh, many are being uh, functionally equivalent may not give sometimes different results, but nonetheless uh, people have developed a very uh, variant uh, or variations within this uh, fundamental vegetation index that make use of basically inverse relationship between red and near infrared reflection because associated with the uh, healthy green vegetation or chlorophyll content. Uh, why inverse relationship here that uh, because uh, as you know that healthy vegetation will have the maximum reflection in near infrared or in infrared part of uh, EM spectrum. Whereas, a vegetation which is have le uh, lack, a lack of uh, chlorophyll content or less chlorophyll content because of some other re some reason then it will have more reflection in the red part of uh, EM spectrum than in near infrared and therefore, uh, this is inverse relationship has been identified and exploited in vegetation indices. So, uh, after once we started getting satellite data maybe earlier not uh, like Landsat, but before that also there were many other satellites not uh, that uh, operational and they though the data were mainly in the scientific domain. Nonetheless, in uh, a lit later part of 60s uh, uh, people have used those scientists have used this uh, satellite remote sensing data to monitor the fluctuations in the vegetation at the earth surface or the changes in the vegetation. So, fluctuation when we say it changes with the season or ch uh, changes in the vegetation might be because of some other reasons for example, global climate change and other. So, what, what basically uh, we are doing through these indices is the measurement of vegetation attributes that includes uh, uh, um, the among many uh, attributes that it, uh, is one is the leaf area index LAI very common derivative. Then uh, uh, percent green cover how much green cover is there in an area chlorophyll content green myoma, uh, biomass and absorbed photosynthetically active radiation apart. So, many such products are being generated through different uh, calculations. But the fundamental remains same that uh, because vegetation a healthy vegetation have the maximum reflection in, in infrared channel and therefore, that can be exploited. So, uh, basically uh, these uh, indices historically have been classified based on a range of attributes including number of spectral bands. So, generally two or greater bands are used like near infrared and red and the method of calculations that is uh, ratio or orthogonal which depends on the required uh, what kind of objectives are there and by uh, their historical development classified as first generation VIs vegetation index or second generation VI. So, for the uh, comparison purposes uh, of these effectiveness of different uh, vegetation indexes there are 7 VIs uh, based on their computation methods like uh, subtraction, division or uh, rational transform. So, uh, the basic uh, remains same that uh, you know you are having uh, near infrared minus red uh, uh, over uh, near infrared plus red that is the basic one, but then there are variations are. So, due to advances in hyperspectral remote sensing because in hyperspectral remote sensing you are having more number of bands and very narrow bands also. 
So therefore, only taking two bands and creating an ND uh, is not really worth because uh, uh, since the options of many bands are there and therefore, we can employ more than two bands to create a vegetation indexes. And also, and uh, the high resolutions especially in terms of spatial resolution which is also increasing so that way we can further use uh, this vegetation indexes or indices uh, little differently as compared to earlier one when we had only say NOAA data or AVHR data, uh, AVHR data or Landsat MSS data at that time because of lack of number of bands we were restricted to use only two bands to develop these. Uh, vegetation indexes. Also, these vegetation indexes have been developed uh, to use specifically with hyperspectral data uh, such as use of norm narrow band vegetation indexes because earlier the bands were quite wide, but now we are having options through hyperspectral remote sensing about narrow bands. So, those can also be used. Now, um, uh, because there are various types of multispectral vegetation indices are there, the most common one and most reliable and have been tested extensively globally that is normalized difference vegetation index. Then there are leaf water content index, then there is a cow thomas tessel uh, cap transformation and then infrared index and then perpendicular vegetation index. Green, greenness above bare soil index, a soil moisture stress index and a mid infrared index and a soil adjusted vegetation index. Many various indexes are there, but the most common one is the NDVI. Rest are the variants from the original because of availability of a more number of bands, more number of bands with the narrow band width and higher spatial resolutions people have been trying to develop newer and newer vegetation indexes. Also a modified shabby is there uh, and a atmospherically resistance vegetation index, soil and atmospherically resistance vegetation index, enhanced vegetation index, aerosol free vegetation index, then uh, triangular vegetation index, then reduced uh, simple ratio and then visible atmospheric resistance index and a normalized difference built up uh, because uh, uh, the, the area might be having vegetation and built up land. So, a, a normalized difference built up index has also been developed. So, there are various such indices are there, but the most common one as we are going to discuss now in detail is the normalized difference vegetation index that is NDVI. So, this is a simple graphical indicator. Uh, NDVI which can be used to analyze remote sensing measurements, multispectral data and assess whether the target that is the target in our case is the vegetation being observed contains live green vegetation or not. That means, it contains a uh, good chlorophyll content, good amount of chlorophyll content or not that uh, it allows us uh, to create index. So, NDVI as we have discussed NIR minus red over NIR plus red and that gives so where red and infrared stands basically for the spectral reflection uh, measurements acquired in red visible part of EM spectrum and near infrared regions respectively of EM spectrum. Uh, if we see uh, some products which have been generated by the people then this is uh, uh, from NOAA AVHRR data 6 months average NDVI average for Australia between 1st December 2012 to 31st May 2013. So, uh, for individual day it is it might be possible to create NDVI or an average of also can be created. So, by looking um, uh, by looking such product we can clearly assess that on the coast, coast uh, north coast and the east coast of Australia, we are having good amount of vegetation or healthy vegetation in remaining parts except in the uh, southwest corner, a uh, remaining part is almost desert. And uh, the whatever the variations within those 6 months have been incorporated here because it is an average uh, NDVI of those 6 months. 
In normalized difference uh, vegetation index, basically, base of, uh, you know, it includes the pho uh, photosynthesis, which requires water, carbon dioxide, and light to order produce sugar and oxygen in the plants or in the trees. And uh, this chlorophyll, which gives the plant their green color, absorbs visible light. That is why we do not have much reflection in the visible part of EM spectrum. But at the same time, it uh, leaves uh, uh, the leaves or uh, uh, vegetation reflects uh, more in the near infrared part of EM spectrum. And uh, because of this inverse relationship between visible and near infrared of vegetation reflection, uh, this makes us, uh, uh, you know, equationally uh, speaking, because plants are only visible light or photosynthesis. So, this means that a healthy plant with good photosynthesis activity can be analyzed by comparing NIR and visible red light and this is what it is done in normalized difference vegetation index. Whereas, the same time unhealthy vegetation, vegetation suffering from stresses or uh, some uh, you know problem related with water or uh, some other issues then will reflect more in the visible light and less in the near infrared. So, this inverse relationship is basically exploited extensively in these indices and uh, healthy vegetation will absorb most of the visible light falling onto it and that is why when you see the visible bands uh, from any of these uh, uh, sensors on board of different satellites, we find that vegetation generally will appear dark whereas, in infrared channels vegetation will appear very bright. Now, NDVI values range basically 0 to 1 because we, we normalize uh, uh, normalize these values. So, the values vary, varies uh, 0 to 1 and uh, we can uh, uh, of course, uh, then maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 depending on what kind of precision one is looking for and uh, a very low NDVI value that is for example, maybe less than 1 basically is correspond to varying areas of rock, sand or snow. That means, there is hardly any vegetation or vegetation is having uh, almost no chlorophyll content. So, dried up vegetation may give you the NDVI value of less than 0.1 and uh, free standing water tend to be in the very low positive to negative values. So, this water sometimes may get little confusion about that part. Soil tend to generate rather small NDVI values of 0.1 to 0.2 also. And uh, sparse vegetation such as uh, shrubs and grasslands may result in moderate NDVI value of 0.2 to 0.5. These are in ideal conditions, but uh, these conditions vary season to season and location to location. So, one has to be little careful why, while interpreting NDVI products. Now, there are non, uh, NDVI like uh, uh, boreal forest, uh, which is very uh, say in this example is of Alaska is maybe having uh, NDVI values between 0 0.6 to 0.8, a relatively quite high uh, NDVI value because of uh, uh, this kind of uh, ecosystem that is boreal forest, dense forest and a good uh, chlorophyll content in that uh, among the leaves. Then a uh, temperate forest, you may have uh, 0.3 to 0.7, for example, in France. Uh, coastal rainforest given by different through, uh, collected through different publications, coastal rainforest uh, on Solomon Islands 0.8 to point now very high uh, NDVI uh, values. Then alpine uh, pastures very low uh, NDVI values. Then annual grassland uh, in California is 0 0.15 to 0.45, and in desert conditions obviously hardly you are having vegetation and vegetation if you are having might be having very little chlorophyll content and therefore, you might be having very very low uh, NDVI values. So, NDVI values are getting very high in case of coastal rainforest and in rivers bay in desert conditions they are getting very very low of 0 0.06 or near 0 uh, in part of Sinai 
Egypt or many other desert areas, these might be there. Now, how, uh, how to interpret these things? So, we will discuss little bit of that part. High NDVI values basically means that uh, there is a dense vegetation and there's been there's that kind of a vegetation we find basically in temperate and tropical forest as you have seen in the coastal region and uh, that uh, the end at that when the images are used or the uh, of that area that is having the peak growth stage and the peak growth stage means at that time the leaves are having the highest concentration of chlorophyll and therefore you may get a very high NDVI values. Uh, NDVI as I also mentioned earlier and this index is used for large scale monitoring of forest disturbances and global vegetation uh, assessments whether there are some changes with time which is occurring due to some reason maybe climate change or uh, you know uh, because of human interventions those things can be assessed are being assessed. Uh, when we go for a global scale uh, vegetation assessment, of course, a very high resolution satellite data are not employed, then relatively coarser resolution data like from NOAA HRR or MODIS uh, are employed to cover at global scale. And uh, more uh, specifically, the NDVI has been used to map ecosystem distribution, uh, predict disturbances and assess their impact monitor changes in functional attributes of ecosystem, few functions, attributes we have already discussed and monitor habitat loss and degradation of uh, carbon assimilation and uh, evaporation. All these things evapotranspiration, all these things can be assessed through NDVI or the changes which are might be occurring in an area. But uh, at a large scale monitoring is the most common application of NDBI, not at a very, uh, you know, uh, you know, in a detail or in a very high spatial resolution. Uh, if we want to use for agricultural related thing, then uh, agricultural farm scale NDBI used to as a predictor of plant attributes and uh, plant physiology status, yield production and crop distribution and also can be used to detect and monitor aquatic vegetation. So, lot of applications at farm scale is also possible. But this farm scale if it is too small farms are there, agricultural lands are there, then things may be completely different. So, one has to be care while careful while using or that level. Um, however, there are um, no technique is perfect. So, NDVI, so there are also drawbacks with the NDVI. Uh, because it is sensitive to effects of soil because uh, all the time you do not have uh, when the satellite records the images it may be also having mixed pixel kind of situation where vegetation is there and where or the soil might be also getting. So, brightness and color of the soil will might play a very important role uh, in your images or in your different bands atmosphere atmospheric conditions may be cloud cover or cloud shadow may create some problem in the NDVI products and of course, leaf canopy shadow because there are plants and uh, trees and they will have their own shadow on other trees also. So, this leaf canopy shadow can also affect your NDVI values. So, one has to be little careful this is one of the uh, drawbacks of NDVI. Another problem with NDVI is and that in dense vegetation it quickly reaches saturation that means it reaches to value 1 or 0.9 and therefore, uh, assessments uh, or the variations in the in case of dense vegetation uh, to assess that variation becomes difficult and uh, this may be due to the uh, fact that the NDVI index is non-linear say uh, uh, that is the uh, issue here with NDVI one of the drawbacks also. So, in end uh, I what I can say that NDVI is good to study large areas and get a rough sense of photosynthetic activity or a rough sense of chlorophyll content. So, if a plant which is going through uh, which is having a uh, going through a good growth 
having a good leaf area index and having high content of chlorophyll then we will be getting a large or a uh, high NDVI value and uh, also it gives us a sense uh, information that uh, what kind of activities are going on within the plant. And it is, uh, it is uh, the sensitivity to soil and aerosol means it has limitations. So, uh, soil part has already been and uh, the, uh, has discussed and also the atmospheric conditions, cloud cover, cloud shadow and maybe aerosols. So, these may create uh, some changes in the values of NDVI if these situations are prevailing in that area for which we are using the images. Now, I take example from India and uh, this is from our own Bhuvan portal. If anyone of you so far has not visited, uh, please uh, go in this Bhuvan and uh, here you can uh, choose like a group is the terrestrial uh, sciences and normalize difference vegetation index from a satellite which is OCM. And uh, here uh, uh, what we are seeing for the land part the what is the condition of vegetation is there based on this NDVI value. And uh, the dates are also given here and uh, that uh, January, February, March, April and all those and dates are there. But uh, here year wise uh, uh, what we are seeing for 2018 the entire year average uh, vegetation index of uh, over India and in the surrounding countries. So, mainly if we focus over India what we find that uh, in the northeast part of India we know it is uh, highly forested and therefore, we are getting a very high NDVI value whereas, a desert part of Rajasthan we are getting very low NDVI value and rest are in between and a forested part of uh, Himachal Pradesh Uttarakhand also we are getting good NDVI. Uh, value. If we go for uh, you know at a farm level or plot level then uh, uh, we, have, we employ high resolution satellite images from land set may be 15 meter or 30 meter uh, spatial resolution data and in urban areas we can develop NDVI like in this case uh, Ponta Grossa of southern Brazil it has been used there. So, NDVI values here it is giving minus 0 0.162 and uh, point, point 0.55. So, green part are having 0.55 NDVI value. So, uh, from a, at a country scale one can assess depending on the uh, sensor and the, of course, the coarser resolution will give you uh, a, a country level coverage or continental level coverage and a high spatial resolution satellite images like Landsat it can give you a farm level or a, a regional level, a local level of uh, and that thing. Now, instead of NDVI, we can have some other indices as we also discussed like for example, enhanced vegetation index. So, what is basically enhanced vegetation index is an optimized uh, vegetation index uh, which has been designed to enhance the vegetation signal with improved sen sensitivity in high biomass region. Because uh, we as we discussed that uh, when you are having dense forest or high chlorophyll content then the saturation reaches very quickly. So, in those areas uh, there is a enhanced vegetation index for uh, in, in high biomass region and improved vegetation monitoring through a decoupling of canopy background signal and a reduction in atmospheric influences. So, in norm uh, in this NDVI uh, we, we were not able to handle the atmospheric effects so uh, you know easily or significantly, but in this uh, enhanced vegetation index these things are possible to handle or decouple with that. So, EBI that is enhanced vegetation index is computed by this equation equation is a near infrared channel minus red channel and then near infrared plus uh, C 1 plus red channel and then minus C 2 blue channel and then L. So, where this uh, uh, near infrared red and blue as you know different bands which are atmospherically corrected. In earlier discussion in NDVI we did not go for that kind of correction 
atmospheric correction or partially atmospherically corrected uh, based on Rayleigh and ozone absorptions and of course, surface reflection. And uh, whereas L is the canopy background and uh, which is adjustment that addresses nonlinear and differential and IR and red and uh, radiant transfer through a canopy and uh, C1 and C2 are the coefficient of aerosol resistant term. So, uh, in en enhanced vegetation index if one would like to develop then lot of inputs are required. The, the first and bigger biggest one is the correcting these channels red uh, infrared and blue channels uh, atmospheric correcting or partially atmospherically corrected and that requires lot of efforts. And uh, these coefficients of aerosol uh, resistant terms which are also blue band to correct for aerosol influences in the red band. And uh, then the coefficient adopted in the uh, like MODIS uh, uh, provides uh, and with MODIS it is possible uh, to some extent to create enhanced vegetation index and uh, this R L1 uh, L is taken as 1, C1 is taken as 6, C2 is taken as these coefficients are taken as 7.5 and G which is here in this equation the gain factor is taken 2.5. So, by which we can have enhanced vegetation index. What are the advantages with uh, enhanced vegetation index over the conventional NDVI? That uh, because NDVI is uh, chlorophyll sensitive because it assesses basically uh, the chlorophyll through the uh, this uh, differentiation with uh, or this inverse relationship between infrared and uh, red channels. Whereas, ED, EVI is the more resp uh, responsive to canopy structural variations and including leaf area index, canopy type and uh, plant physiognomy and canopy ar architecture. So, it uh, it uh, brings lot of other attributes of uh, vegetation into the calculation and that is why it is considered as enhanced vegetation index. So, two vegetation indices complement each other that is NDVI and EVI in global vegetation studies and improve upon the detection of vegetation changes and extraction of canopy biophysical parameters. Another difference between NDVI and EVI is uh, that the presence of a snow, there are some areas maybe like in Himalayan conditions, you are having forest and a snow and then uh, you know NDVI decreases while EVI increases. So, in that uh, sense it may be very useful in case of such situations. There are very, uh, various types of hyperspectral vegetation indices which has been developed or are being developed because as more data as also in the previous uh, earlier discussions we had uh, specifically on hyperspectral remote sensing at that time we discussed that the now the data is becoming available. So, the satellite based space borne uh, hyperspectral data is becoming available though may be having a narrow swath and may not be having a regular coverage means the temporal resolution may not be high. Nonetheless, data is becoming available. So, people have started developing or has already have developed these hyperspectral vegetation indices. With the, this and what are those indices are discrete band normalized difference vegetation index, yellowness index when it is getting you know mature and uh, photochemical reflection index and uh, discrete band normalized difference water index, red edge position determination and uh, crop chlorophyll content prediction and uh, moment uh, distance index. So, various types of indexes are indices are possible with hyperspectral remote sensing data because you are having more number of bands there available to analyze and that is why it is there. So, what are the applications? Uh, many applications we have already touched, but uh, for completeness we will go through once. Uh, applications of this multispectral vegetation indices which we have been discussing examine climate trends. Uh, climate trends when we employ that means we have to have coverage at global scale or at least at continental scale then only we can 
uh, use that and uh, that that means uh, resorting to coarser spatial resolution data for example no avhr data or modis data which provides even uh, coverage almost every day so in that way these global scale uh, climate changes climate trends can be studied through these multispectral vegetation indices and uh, estimate water content of soil and um, that too remotely and uh, monitor droughts so if we can monitor the water content or moisture we can also monitor the droughts and uh, schedule crop irrigation and uh, crop management monitor evaporation and uh, plant transpiration assess changes in biodiversity and classify vegetation and uh, lot many things can be done with these ndvi values or vegetation index as well so this brings to the end of this discussion thank you very much mm -hmm.